Hi everyone, this is Sharon for Real Gals Fish. Now I was just cleaning my fishing reels and I thought to myself, why don't I do a quick overview of a spinning reel to help out our new friends to the sport. So spinning reel, there's no doubt in any fisherman's mind or angler, whatever you want to call this, that this is probably the most widely used and probably the most popular reel for bait fishing. There isn't an angler out there who hasn't touched one of these reels at some time in their fishing career. So let's take a look at the the reel from the front to the back and uh, I'll explain to you briefly what its functions are. Now first of all there are many manufacturers of spinning reels and irregardless of who makes the reel they all do the same thing and they all have the same features on them but they might look just a little bit different as to the design. Now um, spinning reel gets its name because of the rotating bail arms and bail wire that goes around uh, the spool. You notice the spool itself doesn't spin but it does pop up and down and that is to allow the line to be rewound on the spool evenly so it spools from top to bottom, bottom to top so it doesn't bunch up and down. It's very similar to a wine level that you find on a casting reel. If you didn't have that feature on the reel, the line would bunch up either at the top or the bottom or in the middle and it could build up to such a point that it would make it very hard for the rotor arms and the bail wire to circle around the spool. So that's why it pops up and down. Now the bail itself is this wire contraption that's uh, bent across the top of the spool and its function of course is to help manage the line. In this position, the bale is closed so that you can retrieve your line. But when you're casting with a spinning reel, that's when you hook your finger onto the line and pop the bale open. Do your cast and then you can close the bale by either flipping it over with your hand or simply just start cranking the handle to retrieve your line and the automatic bale closer will flip the bale over. Now a lot of anglers prefer to close it manually because sometimes the bay automatic bale openers are choppy or they even jam. And of course when the bale's open your line is free to fall off the face of the spool. The um, handle, sorry, the neck on a spinning reel, you notice it's the, it's the, it's the reel with the long neck. The reason why that uh, is designed this way is because this is the reel that hangs underneath the fishing rod. So the long neck provides the right amount of space required for the bale to spin and not interfere with your fingers or the fishing rod handle itself. And likewise for the long handle. It's long so that there's adequate room between the spinning bale and your fingers. Now another thing about the handle on a spinning reel is it doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, you can simply unscrew it with this screw here, remove it, pop out the handle and then put it in on the other side. So if you're right-handed or left-handed, you can switch it whatever way you want to be comfortable. Now because the handle is so long, sometimes uh, this can be a bit problematic, especially when you're stowing your reel or you're transporting it. This long handle has a tendency to hook on things and a lot of people get impatient and they yank and what they end up doing is damaging this pin hinge and once you've damaged that you've essentially ruined your reel. But there's a little feature on a spinning reel, I'll just get it into the position here and all you need to do is unscrew the bolt here that holds the handle into the body of the reel unscrew it to the point where you feel the hinge loosening up and then just fold the handle into the body of the reel, tighten it and you can see it's collapsed into the reel to allow for storage and transportation. It's a lot better than damaging the reel which will happen. They can damage, the handles do damage very easily if they're not collapsed and you catch them on something. When you're ready to fish just simply extend the handle, tighten the screw and there you are, you're back in business. Okay? Now the feature you find on this reel is this little switch. 
sometimes located above the rotor itself or sometimes found up here on the heel of the reel. And that's your anti-reverse. Now anti-reverse, when it's in the on position, you can only crank your handle in one direction and that is to retrieve your line. If you want the handle to swing in both directions, you're simply going to turn the anti-reverse off and now your reel is free to either go in a clockwise direction or a counterclockwise direction. Now remember when you've got it off, you've effectively disengaged your drag and all your gearing system so your handle is free to spin in either direction. So if your line gets pulled, it's going to do that. So I strongly recommend that um, when you start out, until you get used to what you're doing with your reel, keep it in the on position so that the reel can only wind to retrieve line so you're not going to lose line. Okay, so that's your anti-reverse. Now another feature, uh, on this reel it's located on the on the cap of the spool. On other makes you can also find a knob that is located on the rear of the body of the uh, of a spinning reel. This is your drag system. This is a front drag system and this reel is considered a rear drag system. It doesn't matter where the drag is located, it does the same thing. Drag is simply adding tension to the line as it's being pulled off the reel. If you add drag, you're making it harder to pull off the reel. If you decrease the drag, you're making it easier to pull off the reel. Some anglers prefer the rear drag system because it's easier to use. Others prefer the front drag system because they say it's more spontaneous than the rear drag system. But I'll leave that up to you. Which one if you ever decide to use, it's entirely up to you. As a recreational angler, it really doesn't make much difference whether it's on the, the back or front. Sometimes it's just ease of use. Okay, so that's your drag system. So basically, we've gone through the, the basic uh, operations of your spinning reel. Now they do come in different sizes, uh, especially the body and the, the spool or the arbor. Uh, this is for different um, applications such as uh, using an ultralight. I have one here. Here's an ultralight reel. You can see the difference in the, the size, the body, and of course the, the size of the spool and the arbor. Um, they also come much bigger uh, for the uh, big surf sticks and salt border fishing. And of course the larger the spool head, the heavier test weight line that you can use on the reel. So that in a nutshell is your spinning reel. And until the next time, this is Sharon, Tight Lines.